I've got a couple guests today. One that is uh, one I talk to a lot about, the Krazzle, but we're not talking about that today. Uh, Matthew Bizzo is joining me. Also, I have uh, Les Rorick joining me. Uh, We're here to talk about a really wonderful production called Significant Other. Uh, Really looking forward to hearing more about this. This is going to be performed in two places, uh, at the Ghost Light in Benton Harbor, as well as the Acorn in Three Oaks. Welcome. Thank you very much. Yes, an honor to be here. Matthew, we'll talk with you in just a moment about uh, because you're the lead guy in the play. uh, So you've got a big uh, role ahead of you. But uh, we'll talk with Les first. Les, tell me a little bit about this production. This is something that uh, sounds like a pretty cool story. Yeah. So Significant Other is written by a playwright named Joshua Harmon, who also wrote uh, a playwright that was pretty famous on Broadway called Bad Jews. And this is a production that he put together in 2015. And it was right before gay marriage was legalized. This show, Significant Other, portrays a gay man who has three best friends, all straight women. And one by one, these women start to get uh, paired up and start to have weddings. And this main character named Jordan Berman starts to wonder, who's my significant other? Am I ever going to get uh, paired up and married? And that's what this uh, story explores. And so it's a relatively small cast. Is it just those four people then? Those are the four main characters. There's also a few other characters. Some actors play uh, uh, multiple characters. So that might be confusing a little bit for audiences that first see it, but they get used to it after after a while. And then there's also one of Jordan's family members that comes in and is a great emotional support to him. That's really cool. Uh, This is uh, something that sounds really cool. I've never seen this play. Is this a relatively new one then? So I believe it 20, uh, 2015 was when it was uh, out and then it came out, out on Broadway. Um, it's starting to show up in different regional theaters and a lot of college productions put it on as well. So it sounds like, uh, and you told me a brief story, Matthew, uh, beforehand. It sounds like this is a play that uh, you have rehearsed a quite a long time <laughs> uh, and you've been waiting to be able to perform this. Tell me a little bit more about that. It, you've waited a lot longer than most people do to perform a play. Yeah, you know, this was actually, um, so I've recently gotten more into theater. If you've been listening to my conversations with Johnny, we definitely talked about my theater experience. This was going to be my first theater experience back in 2020. Les came in, we did a read through, I wanna say in like February of 2020. And we're like, all right, we're gonna start rehearsing okay, we're going on Zoom. And for about three months, we did a lot of virtual read-throughs thinking, oh, this will only last two weeks, you know, every other two weeks. <laughs> um, and so from there, we uh, w- wasn't quite safe enough to put on the production last year. There's a lot of really great um, close contact, intimate scenes with uh, Jordan and his friends and the other various characters. So for the safety of all the actors, we didn't get to perform it in 2021, but I've been waiting. I've been so excited to bring Jordan Bourbon to life in uh, Berrien County. Uh, and so finally, after a long two year wait, and I still have the same script that I have um, with all of the notes from back in 2020, we finally get to bring it to life. Now you did some other productions in between there at, at various places, so that helped you, uh, you know, brush up on more skills. But did you, at the in, the whole entire time span, were you still kind of going back and you know even working with some of the other casts as well as less and kind of fine tuning and really figuring out who your character is? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, I would say it was in the back of my mind. So I had that opportunity. My first production was actually less directed as well at the Ghost Light Theater called Small Mouth Sounds. Very different character. I played a, um, a promiscuous yoga teacher in that one. Very different from the Jordan Berman character. But certainly um, I've had the script sitting, you know, I had my at-home desk. The script was sitting right sure. there. Anytime I would like have a thought, I would jot it down in the book about the character. Um, you know, I, I think this in particular, you know, at, as a gay man in Berrien County, with having the opportunity to tell this story, you know, I, I'm from Niles, being able to tell this story in my home region um, feels really significant to be able to telling uh, a queer based story mm-hmm. around here and to share that, that yes, where there might be a, another love interest involved, but there's a lot of character points in here that yeah. everyone relates to. Um, we have a lot of conversations with the staff about, or not the staff, with the cast, um, <laughs> who about how like, you know, the things that 
um, Jordan goes through are very relatable things, feelings of, of loneliness, of uncertainty, of, um, you know, desire, um, all of these kind of, uh, you know, there's a little bit of like stalker uh, conversation, which I'm like, oh no, I'm very much relating to Jordan right now. <laughs> so being able to tap into some of those personal experiences have been really fun. And certainly over the last two years and the other productions I've done, I, I'm, I'm very, I'm in a way glad that I was able to wait and think about this character because I'm just very excited to bring him to life. I picked up a lot of quirks from him and you know, there's a definite blurring of Jordan and Matthew going on. And I've, it's been really fun to really identify those differences and what characteristics uh, I get to bring out and share with everyone on the stage. Absolutely. Uh, and Les, this is time, like you said, that that time span has really probably even helped you as a director, um, you know, help figure out some stuff and, and you know, even just shooting a text to some of your uh, some of your cast members and say, oh, I was just thinking about this. You, you kind of got a little bit more time with that, with that two years. Has that helped or hurt the production? Oh, it has absolutely helped the production. Yeah. I, one of the other uh, characters, one of the women that are in the play is uh, another actor named Tara, who was able to be in the Small Mouse Sounds production last year. And so Matt and Tara got to work together and start to build that relationship. As actors, it's really nice when you trust your fellow, your actors on stage. And so the more time you can spend with them is so much better. As far as the story goes, I would absolutely echo what Matt said. This is such a relatable story. Um, it, it has to do with, uh, you know, kind of inner uh, love on the internet, which is something that, you know, all of us in the last 10 or 15 years started to experience. Uh, Facebook, which is a huge thing that's in all of our lives and crushes and uh, when crushes turn into obsessions and I'm so nervous to talk to someone. Uh, I was actually the last of my group of friends, probably about five or six guys to get married in my mid thirties. And so it was, I can absolutely relate with this conversation of seeing all my friends pair up and wait, wait a second, wait a second, what, what about me? Am I ever going to find my person? So that's absolutely a relatable part of the story that over the last two years has been solved because I got married a year ago during COVID. Uh, so it was absolutely a wonderful part that helped me grow to help be able to understand and relate to Jordan uh, more. Um, and then, uh, uh, yeah, just to, uh, as I've developed as an artist and as a director, I've been able to bring those new ideas to this piece. Uh, in addition to the acting, there's a lot of really exciting uh, scenic design and lighting design and sound design that, that we're looking forward to incorporating into the story. And all of that, I've grown as a director. So this show is going to be even better now than I think it would have been uh, two years ago. Oh, and I've worked both sides of, of being on stage and being be behind the scenes. Any shout outs you want to do for any of the people that have helped you kind of put that the rest of the production together? Oh, tons. Like, gosh, my uh, special thanks section of the program was just immense. Uh, I, I mean, I starting from the top, Paul Mao, our artistic director at Ghost Light, is one of the most supportive artistic directors that I've ever worked with. It is just such a treat for him to be able to really just give me a kind of an open door and, and such encouragement and absolutely backs us. He was the one who actually found this story and shared it with me two years ago. So I was so grateful for that. And so he's just been incredibly supportive um, from the kind of uh, artistic end and kind of the executive uh, side. Other uh, folks that are helping with the technical elements are our set builder, Danny Gilligan, is, is extremely talented. He's actually a home builder. So he uh, overbuilds our set a little bit. It's like this thing could last probably 10 more years. Uh, and so we're kind of teaching him how to build it for a little bit cheaper. Sure. But the quality is, is incredible. So super grateful awesome. to him. Uh, Paul Stortz is another guy that we have who is just an incredible technician that knows everything about computers and uh, is learning about lights and sound and can really just help us solve any problem customer service focused uh, to the max the last person i'll shout out is laura gilligan who's actually danny's wife and she's doing a really nice uh kind of set painting piece for us oh no and one more can't forget uh leah mccoskey who's doing our costumes leah is actually coming out of semi-retirement from doing costume design she's actually a full-time teacher over at lake michigan college and uh she's uh excited to be back in the theater world doing costume design again and it is a treat to have her because she's got a great vision that's awesome and this like you said this production is not only in uh at the ghost light but also going to be at the acorn are you moving set pieces from one place to the other as well or is it going to be more of a straight down version 
It will be a slightly stripped down version, but no less quality. Uh, there's going to be a lot of the same elements, a lot of the sound design and uh, lighting design, and then just a few of the furniture items we're going to bring over because it's only a one day production at Acorn, mm -hmm. and it would have been too much for us to rebuild the set there. But we'll try to get it as close to the original production as possible. Well, looking forward to this. And I know, Matthew, you've been uh, really telling everybody on Facebook, hey, you need to come see this show. And of course, yeah. people do, uh, because you said these stories are so relatable and so fun uh, and something that everybody's going to connect with. Um, when can we go see this? How do we get tickets? We can check out this production uh, June 9th through June 19th at the Ghost Light Theater. The, uh, the weekday performances, uh, Friday, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, are all at 7.30 p.m. And then the Sunday performances are at 3 o'clock. The special Acorn performance is going to be Saturday, June 25th, and that is an 8 p.m. performance. The show runs about 2 hours, 15 minutes, with a little intermission. Tickets for the Ghost Light Productions can be found at ghostlightbh.com. Pretty sure it's .com. If it's not, check out .org and you'll find it. Uh, and tickets are available there at different pricing tiers for students and seniors and regular admission. Wonderful. I'm lo looking forward to this. Uh, yeah, you can find more information all over the place, Facebook as well as the website. Uh, Matthew, I think you, uh, you've had some time to work on this. You're ready to, you're ready to do this. Lines and everything are ready to go and you're going to do a fantastic job. Oh, yes. This is, I'm very excited. This is the first role I've been able to tackle that has this many lines. Yeah. And it, it's a lot. So I, I'm very excited to bring it. I've been literally recording myself on my way into work and my way back from rehearsals. I'm listening to myself on repeat. So I'm excited for you guys to hear what I sound like when I'm actually on stage now. Well, I can't wait to see it, and neither can my dog, because he's now excited about uh, about the whole thing. So uh, we're looking forward to seeing you and the uh, wonderful cast and crew of Significant Other at the Ghost Light and the Acorn. But thank you, Matthew and Les, uh, for talking to me about this show. It looks like it's going to be a good time. Thanks, thank Johnny. you, Johnny.